In 2002, the first games to utilize the Triforce hardware were released. This new arcade board, creatively named after the Triforce from The Legend of Zelda, was a technology developed jointly by video game giants Namco, Sega, and Nintendo. The hardware is similar to the Nintendo GameCube and is used in a number of arcade games by Nintendo and Sega, including a pair of Mario Kart arcade games, Donkey Kong Jungle Fever, a Sega baseball game, a game called The Key of Avalon, Virtua Striker 4, and F-Zero AX. AX was released to arcades in 2003 as a companion to the newest F-Zero console game, F-Zero GX for the GameCube. These two games form what is, in my opinion, the best F-Zero experience there is, maybe even the world's greatest racer. The games were developed by Amusement Vision, a team formed at Sega that was eventually absorbed into the company and doesn't work independently today. Isn't that amazing? Sega used to be the most bitter of rivals with Nintendo, but this time around they worked jointly to create the fastest and craziest racer there is. Amusement Vision was also responsible for the Super Monkey Ball games, and some employees even worked on the arcade Daytona USA racers. I won't lie, F-Zero GX is one of those games that goes above and beyond. It is a gaming masterpiece, and thinking about how much went into this one game only cements that opinion for me. I get the feeling this game will get overlooked simply because it came at a time when Nintendo had fallen behind Sony in the console race. But being second best in sales doesn't stop the games from being immortal. GX takes F-Zero X and turns it into the fastest, sleekest, and the hardest racer on the GameCube. Mario Kart wishes it was this metal. I could go on for a good number of hours about the kind of experiences I've had with this game. From beating it on Master for the very first time, to clearing the infamously difficult story mode, to unlocking all endings by beating the game on Master with all 41 characters, to venturing out to a local arcade to play AX multiple times before discovering to my horror that they had gotten rid of it, to watching the speedruns show just how high the skill ceiling is, to experimenting endlessly with the custom machines, to exploiting glitches for the first time, GX is one of the games that has been immortalized in the gaming community and for good reason. The controls have vastly improved. You have more control over your machine than in any other F-Zero. Accelerate, boost, drift turn, spin attack, side attack, strafe, all functions from F-Zero X are here, but they chain into each other really well, and pro players have developed a number of techniques for going even faster. The controls also have a number of customization options. In addition to remapping the buttons, you can actually calibrate the control stick so you can determine just how much tilt you need before you start turning. This will be a running theme with GX. The level of detail and thought put into it is immense. You're gonna need all this too. F-Zero GX is notoriously difficult. You are going to want to practice the tracks a lot before attempting Grand Prix mode, even on the lowest difficulty, because there's a lot to take in on every course. Obstacle locations, how to race around cylinders, how big a shortcut you can get away with. Yet again you can unlock Master Mode, which is insanely hard, but that's nothing compared to the unlockable Diamond Cup. The fourth of the five Grand Prix series, where the construction team apparently ran low on guardrails, and with the AI as aggressive as it is, you're gonna get bumped off a lot. I'm at the point where I can beat it consistently, but I remember when I was a new player too. It took forever to get good at. Like F-Zero X, the Time Attack, Practice, and Grand Prix modes all return. Three core series are available from the start, with five tracks apiece, and many of your favorite locations return in glorious 3D. I don't normally think of the GameCube as a graphical powerhouse, but the scenery in many of the courses looks absolutely beautiful. Mute City is just glorious, with signs literally saying, Go Fast. Big Blue is, well, big, and blue, and Sand Ocean now has giant worms that come out and snack on sand fish in the background. There's even a giant Rob the Robot in Port Town. One new location is Casino Palace, known as Vegas Palace in Japan. I love this place because it has giant roulette wheels and clowns pointing towards junctions with a sign underneath that says good luck. It just amazes me the level of detail in the settings here. And the course design is twice as crazy as F-Zero X. Like that game, GX takes full advantage of the third dimension, featuring upside down roads, loops, tubes you drive on the inside of, or even the outside, or sometimes both. There might be a tube going through another part of the track, one course features a Mobius, which means you race on both sides of the course to complete a lap, 
the cylinders return, you've got ice floors, dash plates, mines, jumps, there are a lot more branching paths as well, or chances to change which path you're on, and there is yet another half pipe, which features lots of gaps as one half pipe crosses with another. There's a massive amount of content in this game. The 30 vehicles from F-Zero X are available in GX through a point buy system. You earn points by playing the game and spend them on unlockables. Also making a return is the machine editor, allowing you to piece together unlocked parts and create your own machine complete with a custom paint job, and you can even create your own decals. This game has it all. Well, actually you can't name your machine, I've never understood that. You have to stick with whatever name the game gives your machine, for better or worse. Time Attack Mode sees the return of the Staff Ghost, which is yet another optional challenge to try out. Although considering that the custom vehicles can get very overpowered if you make the right combination of parts, it's a little unfair that the Staff Ghosts never get to use them. You can, of course, save your own ghosts, as many as you wish, as long as your GameCube memory card can hold them, and you can also save replays of any Grand Prix or Time Attack run, and re-watch them from a variety of camera angles, or even the perspective of the other racers. Sometimes I see a rival flying off the track, and I just have to see how that even happened. I don't play a huge amount of racing games, but I think you'd be hard-pressed to find one with a replay feature for races with 30 cars, allowing you to view the race from any car's perspective, along with letting you listen to any of the unlockable music available. And GX has an absolutely massive number of unlockables. Between new vehicles and parts for custom ships, beating any Grand Prix with a default vehicle allows you to interview the pilot, which means we can finally know what these guys are doing with the prize money. Okay, to be perfectly honest, the interviews aren't all that interesting, actually. The voice acting isn't all that good, and you can only ask one question per Grand Prix. That's a lot of replays if you want to hear all the answers, but that's also a ton of effort going into every character. Between that, the pilot profiles, and the character endings unlocked for beating Master Mode, this game gives us the best glimpse into the F-Zero universe out of all the games. It's also pretty funny to see the interviewer shaking in his pants when standing next to Black Shadow. Not only that, this has actually gone to Burke's video game debut way before she was in Metal Gear Solid. I just thought I'd point that out, it's amusing to me. But wait, there's even more! I mentioned an arcade game, didn't I? F-Zero AX is a sight to behold in arcades that still have it. Shame the arcade I go to no longer does. The cabinet I remember was this giant blue falcon-shaped car seat, like other arcade racers where they have actual foot pedals and a steering wheel. Six unique courses and ten unique machines are available in F-Zero AX, and if you brought a GameCube memory card with F-Zero GX data, you could actually use your own custom vehicle in the arcade. If you win a race on the arcade courses, they'd be unlocked in GX, and if you use the new vehicles, they'll unlock in GX as well. You could also purchase an F-Zero license card, a special card that stores track records and a custom machine that uses parts only available in AX. If you unlock those in AX, they'll unlock in GX as well. Some parts are available only in Japan though, so you're going to need a cheat device to unlock them. That aside, all of this other stuff is possible to unlock with GX alone through a new game mode. If there's one thing people remember about F-Zero GX, if nothing else, it's the story mode. If you thought Master Mode was stupidly hard, you ain't seen nothing yet. Story Mode has nine missions, many with special objectives or race gimmicks, and they are so astronomically hard that a beginner could get stuck on even the first two missions. And if you manage to win there, a hard mode unlocks. And if you beat that, very hard mode unlocks. But you have to beat this to unlock AX content without going to an arcade, so, uh, good luck? There isn't much to the story part of Story Mode, it's just a basic plot about Black Shadow trying to defeat Captain Falcon by killing him before the race even begins. However, the cutscenes they made are a joy to watch, definitely worth getting through the game just to see them at least once. There's a crazy amount of detail to the cutscenes, including more music that doesn't appear on any sort of OST so you can only hear it over the characters talking. Oh, and that ending song you hear after Chapter 9? Well worth every bit of effort. Listen.
The actual missions are nice and varied. The first has you race alone on a basic track where you have to pick up items placed throughout the track and finish within the time limit. Basic on normal mode, stupidly hard on the higher difficulties because of the tight time limit and you only have three laps to pick up the items. The second mission is a one-on-one -on -one race on a course with boulders that drop on you. Mission 3 is a basic three lap race. Mission 4 is a throwback to the death race mode where you have to destroy all the vehicles in front of you. Mission 5 is just nuts. It looks like a straight course with a time limit, but the walls here attempt to cut off your escape, and the time limit is insanely tight. Mission 6 is a shout out to the movie Speed. Your machine has a bomb on it that destroys you if you go too slowly, and the track is long and filled with obstacles. The most infamous of these is Mission 7. It's just a simple race, right? No gimmick or anything, what's the problem? The problem is that you have the most aggressive AI in the game, a track that's trying to kill you in many ways, and even has obstacles that don't appear anywhere else besides the track after this. What's more, Black Shadow and Blood Falcon are always at the front of the pack, ready to destroy you if you pass them. And even if you do destroy them, there are still 27 other cars in the race that want to steal your victory. On the higher difficulties, you have to race additional laps which just gives them even more time to take your win away from you. There's a reason people still rant like crazy about this one. It makes the final two missions, another one-on-one -on -one and a final course with no guardrails that's reminiscent of Rainbow Road, look tame by comparison. The game's soundtrack is also spectacular. Though it includes very few songs from F-Zero X, and even the songs from older games have to be unlocked with button codes, the songs in this game are really great, an excellent mixture of techno sounds with electric guitars for good measure. The music will even change when it's the final lap, not like Mario Kart which just increases the tempo. The melody also changes. In addition to the course music, every single one of the 41 characters in this game comes complete with their own theme song. Some even have lyrics! You won't even hear the music outside the pilot profiles in the ending movies, though you can listen to them during a replay goes to show how much extra effort went into F-Zero GX, though I'd have tried to find more ways to hear these songs because they are pretty good songs. F-Zero GX and its arcade counterpart are two of my favorite games of all time. 41 vehicles, the option to create your own vehicles, fast and challenging gameplay, 33 total racetracks, a massive number of unlockables, this is the kind of game you can play for over 15 years and still not be totally done with it. I haven't even touched upon any of the advanced tech you see in videos of the game online. There are players out there who have pushed this game to its absolute limit. World record times are entertaining to watch on their own, though if you blink, you might not even notice the race is over. This collaboration between Namco, Sega, and Nintendo created one of the greatest racers available. The only sour note here is, what do you do to top this? How do you make something better than GX? Yeah, suffice to say it might not be all uphill from here for F-Zero. Next time, we go portable again, and it's not exactly the best of times.